I read the statement, um, but I'm just curious why drop out now? Really, a statement sums it up pretty well, Bowen. Uh, we thought that we had a, a good, clear path towards the United States Senate. And I had a lot of people across the state and in Congress and actually in the United States Senate to encourage me to uh, to pursue that seat. But unfortunately, the resources that were going to be necessary for me to actually win it just weren't there. And I was dependent upon uh, the folks within the state to try and push me over the finish line. But on the day that I filed, when the president, uh, four hours later, endorsed against me, um, that that was a, a big surprise and, and became very clear that I wasn't going to have the resources resources to uh, win that seat. And I can tell you that I, I truly believe with all my heart that it is very critical for us to make sure that that seat in Montana flips to Republican. I think that it is the 51st vote in the United States Senate. And we are in such a, a dire position uh, as a nation that I want to make sure that I don't do anything to keep that from happening. And that's what I shared with Senator Daines. And that's why I came out and supported uh, Tim Sheehy. And then I spent a few days at home with my family. And I had an overwhelming outpouring of support at that time from people across the state, uh, including several of the folks that are currently uh, running for the Montana 2 uh, District, the House of Representatives, to please come back and, and refile. But Bellin, I've had a death threat that uh, forced Capitol Police to contact local law enforcement and go out and visit uh, my children's homes where my grandchildren are. My wife was there at the time while I was here in Washington, D.C. Um, I've had false and defamatory uh, gossip and rumors uh, spread about me. And, and not only has that uh, taken a, a huge toll on me and really keeps me from focusing on the, the work that I want to do, but it also um, causes a big problem for Republicans to elect uh, another uh, candidate for the House of Representatives in Montana, too. And I will tell you that during this past week, when I watched the Republicans in the House pass a, a minibus, which is another funding uh, tool that Congress uses when they can't pass their budget, and, and increase spending by another $16 billion while we are in the majority, it makes me very frustrated and, and puts me in a place where I, I cannot justify being here and seeing all these problems take place through the election and, and try to do work that's not accomplishing things. Right. Um you know, and let's talk about the the rumors and and death threats. Um, you know, have you experienced such a turbulent year in politics like this before? Never. I can honestly say that when I was in the Montana legislature, that I enjoyed that work. I enjoyed working uh, across the aisle. Every piece of legislation had a hearing. Every piece of legislation that passed through the committee was able to be brought out to the floor. And so you felt like your work was being productive. And again, coming in in, in 2020, I knew I was going to be serving in the minority and it was going to be difficult for us to get uh, any of our, our key pieces um, accomplished or passed. But to come back into the majority and see that the spending, which is now our national debt is at $34 trillion, to see that continuing to climb at a rapid rate and to see our southern border uh, still laying wide open, um, it, it's very troubling. And I have not had the impact that uh, I, I expected out of myself. And, and so it's just it's time to allow someone else to to try and pursue that seat. At what point uh, did you know that you were going to drop out or did you wake up Friday morning and say, this is it? No, I, I can honestly say that had I not had so much um contact with people across the state after I withdrew from the Senate race that I probably at that point would have just said, uh, no, I'm going to go ahead and, and conclude right here. But again, then all the other things take place and you have a lot of people that are um, calling and, and trying to get you to stay in the race. And, and so you have this, this tug of war that you have to sort of work through. Uh, uh, and then I will tell you that when we get to this week and, and that spending uh, continues 
And uh, I talked to the chairman of the budget committee, uh, Jody Arrington, and there's nothing that we see turning in the foreseeable future to, to curb this, this spending. It's just, it's too frustrating. Um, you know, and I, I spoke with Steve Daines last week and, and he said that, um, uh, that you two spoke about running for re-election and, and he said that he really supported you in that endeavor but i i take it that support um isn't enough this year again you have to take all of the different components and weigh them out and quite frankly bill um at the end of the day you look to your family and say can, can i justify spending the time that I do in Washington, D.C., away from my children, away from my grandchildren, and, and not see us moving the needle in order to uh, accomplish the things that I that I set as my expectations, to curb the out-of-control spending, to try and make sure that we secure our border. And, and if I cannot make a dent on those types of things, it's very difficult to go back to my family and justify the, the time that I end up spending away from home. Well, you know, let's talk about, uh, I guess, making an impact in politics. Do you feel like you have made an impact? The one place that we actually have made a huge impact is on the Veterans Affairs Committee. And I've had a, a strong relationship with Secretary McDonough, even though he's a Biden appointee, and a strong relationship with uh, Undersecretary Elna Hall, Health uh, Undersecretary Elna Hall. And, and we were able to uh, go into Fort Harrison and identify some, some severe problems and make some major changes about staffing and about training and about hiring practices. And, and because of that, uh, we're, we are reevaluating the entire healthcare delivery system for the Veterans Administration throughout Montana, which means that we are going to be de delivering better health care for our veterans. And that's going to improve not only uh, their health, but also the morale of, of all the people working within the Veterans Administration throughout Montana. And so I, I'm really pleased about that. What do you think is, I mean, has politics changed? uh recently i mean if if you're not able to get anything accomplished i mean is that anything new for you it's going to be very frustrating i have to say for people going forward because you have these big structures uh that are in place um and and i i tried to work with a group of people to to bring reforms forward but there are so many outside influences that are invested into the uh, structure, the way it is now, it, it, it's difficult. And, and so I'm 64. I'm sure a younger person who has more energy and, and time would uh, be able to come in here and, and, and hopefully make a difference. That's what we all hope for, right? But I'm, I'm going to be 64 in July, and it's certainly uh, it's time for someone else to, to uh, come up here and give it a shot. Is, is this a hard decision to make? Oh, it's always a difficult def uh, decision. I mean, I've served uh, the people across Montana for 14 years, and I love the people that I represent. And whether I was in the legislature or the state auditor, um, I've got relationships with people across the state that I truly do love and care about. And so uh, to not be able to be on the front line and fighting for them. It's difficult, but I also have uh, two little grandchildren at home, uh, three sons and a wife that I love very dearly as well. And, and I wanna make sure that I'm there for them. As I tell people that my, my favorite title that I've ever had is pop. And that's what my grandchildren call me. Right, I um, no. well, you've, you've uh, worked very hard um, for a long time. Do you, is there anything that you would like to say to the, to the people of Montana. It has been an absolute honor and privilege to serve the people across the state of Montana. I've done a lot of tours uh, for folks that come into town and, and, and visit. And one of the uh, places we go is Statuary Hall. And when you go to Statuary Hall, it's the old house chambers. And so there's a gallery around there or balcony, whatever you would prefer to call it. And within the floor, there are brass plates that uh, each of the folks that served in the House and served as president, there's a, a brass plate there for them. And I go over to this one brass plate, and it's where Abraham Lincoln's desk was when he served in the House, and Statuary Hall was the House of Representatives floor. And, and when you look upon that, 
and you think about Abraham Lincoln standing on that spot and delivering an address to the House floor about the, the issues of the day. This was obviously before the uh, the Civil War. The issues of the day and the things that were important, it, it, it really makes you recognize not only the privilege that it is to serve here, but the responsibility that comes along with that. And, and, and I reflect upon it uh, every day, I can tell you. Right. I am. Um... Do you and and something that I was talking about with uh, Senator Daines last week was was having a, a unified um, GOP, um, you know, with this election, um, very coordinated. Uh, do you have hope for that? I do. I do. And it is critically important when I see the uh, the challenges that we face. Again, that 51st vote in the United States Senate to make sure that the Republicans have the majority, it's critical. It is absolutely critical to make sure uh, that we can have that seat. And, and I can't stress that enough. The House, we certainly want to uh, maintain that majority. And, and so we have at least two of the three legs of the three-legged stool of, uh, of government to be able to try and, and pursue our agenda going forward. And I'm optimistic that President Trump will get reelected. And then we're going to be able to see some of that agenda uh, as far as the uh, securing our southern border. I would hope that we could put some more of that into statute so that it couldn't uh, be so easily rolled back and that we can use that to, to make sure we're protecting our country as well.